outside of wildlife. The Animal Show! And now let's have a wild welcome for... Your furry friends, Stinky and Jay! animals out there. I am Stinky. And I am Jake. And today our guests are a badger and a rabbit. A badger and a rabbit. Now both of these animals live in burrows. Burrows? Uh, yeah. Jake, wait a minute. What is a burrow? Stinky, you know what a burrow is. You're huh? a skunk. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. I grew up in a burrow, didn't sure. I? It's a hole that animals dig in the ground and live in. That's right. Animals like badgers and rabbits and skunks, skunks. live in burrows. Yeah, well, what kind of a burrow did you grow up in? Well, polar bears don't live in burrows. We seek shelter in the snow. The snow? The snow. Jake, that's terrible. Well, we gotta dig you a nice burrow. But I don't want to live in a hole in the ground. Of course you do. I better start digging right now. But... Uh, 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 we'll be back right after this with our first guest. <laughs> you got a shovel, Jake? Uh, and now it's time for... That's amazing! Today, look at all those rabbits! Wait, wait, wait. I, don't, I don't see any rabbits. Rabbits everywhere! That's because female rabbits can have babies when they're only four months old. Mm. And they can give birth to as many as seven babies at a time. Mm -hmm. In a single year, one female rabbit can give rise to several thousand rabbits. Whoa! We better start knitting bunny booties now. <laughs> <laughs> Another animal whose babies will make you say, uh, That's ama amazing! Stinky, Stinky, will you stop that digging? Oh. What? What, Jake? I said stop digging. Uh, you know what? I'd say you're going to take an extra, extra, extra large burrow. It's time for our first guest. Uh, well, maybe you can help me dig. Uh, from Europe and around the world. World! Uh, here is Humphrey, the, the badger. Uh, where? Boy, of all the towns in all the world, I had to end up here. Well, here's looking at you, fellas. Oh, well, welcome, Humphrey. <laughs> yeah, hiya, Humphrey. Grab a shovel. We're digging a burrow for Jake. Oh. No, Stinky, we badgers don't use shovels. We have very strong arms. Yeah, that's all we need to dig a burrow. Tell us more, Humphrey. Mm. Oh, well, certainly, Jake. Oh. Uh, you see, despite our size, uh, we badgers are very powerful animals. Ooh. Yeah, I might not look it, but I'm a regular dynamo. Well, you badgers must have a great sense of balance to be able to walk across a log like that. Oh, yes, and we also have a strong set of clawed feet. Now, are badgers related to skunks? No, no. Uh, even though we look kind of the same, the skunk and the badger aren't relatives. Oh, well, don't take it too hard, Humphrey. You can't have everything. Oh, but Stinky, we badgers have so much going for us. Uh, just take a look at our beautiful homes. Yeah, those are our burrows. We badgers call those burrows a set. Well, what's that badger doing? Well, she's getting her set all set for sleeping. Mm. Yeah, that straw and hay is what we use as a bed. I understand badgers keep their burrows very neat. That's right, Jake. Uh, we bring our bedding outside so the fresh air will clean it up. And when it's time to sleep, we drag it back into the burrow. Now, how many badgers <laughs> live in a burrow? Oh, there can be as many as 15 of us living together. Yeah, some of them are usually cubs who stay underground for about eight weeks after they're born. Hmm, now is that the size of the whole burrow? Oh, my no. A badger burrow usually has several rooms and tunnels that connect them. Our burrow can really be quite large. Uh, do you have enough room for Jake? Um... It's not that large. Uh, Humphrey, uh, isn't it true that badgers are mostly nocturnal animals? Well, the answer to your question is yes. Badgers are nocturnal. Oh, I know what nocturnal means. Good, Stinky. Uh, but I forget. Well, nocturnal means that badgers mostly come out at night. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it sure is. Now, we don't like to leave our burrows during the day. We curl up in there until it's evening and then head out into the dark looking for food. And we badgers are very set in our ways. We even travel the same paths every day. Mm. Hey, you see uh, how that badger's worn down a trail through that hay and high grass? So you really like the life of a badger. Oh, yes. The life of a badger is a fine life. A pretty picture, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we gather food at night and explore the land until morning, and then return to the comfort and safety of our burrows. Well, Humphrey, it was a pleasure to meet you. And it would be an even greater pleasure if you would help me dig a burrow for Jake here. Whoa. 
Yeah, he looks like uh, an extra, extra, extra large. Yeah, that, that's what uh, I thought. But yeah. come on, let's get to work. All I'm right, starting over, right over in this here. area. <laughs> See this area well, here? Yeah. And now it's time to visit some other badgers in their burrow on Baby Talk. Let's see if we can get comfy. Okay, um, well, I'm very comfy here, Mom. I'm real comfy. How about you? Mm, um, um, mm, well, um, huh? no. Oh, uh, well, uh, let me see if I can help you, Mom. Um, I'll push your face just a little like this, and, uh, and I'll, I'll rearrange your fur. Uh, yeah, yeah, how's that? And, and l let me just shove this over there. And, oh, and I know what I'll do. I'll curl up into a nice little ball. Here goes. Uh, now watch this. Uh, 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 like this. There, how's that? Why don't you go outside? Hey, my mom said I could come out. Oh, mine too. Hey, so what do we do now, huh? I'm gonna go sniff this dirt over here. Well, I'm going over here, yeah. Ooh, oh, nice. no, 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 no. I'm gonna come back, yeah, yeah. Hey, let's go this way, okay? Oh, okay, I'm right behind you. All right. Hey, there's my mom. Oh, wow. Hey, mom, 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 it's great out here. Yeah, do you think we can stay out all the way until it's light? Of course, but stay with me and don't follow Brian. Bye-bye. <laughs> Oh, take a break. What are you doing, Jake? Oh, just cleaning up a little. Where's Humphrey? Oh, he's digging another set of tunnels under your feet. Oh, is, isn't it dark in those tunnels? Well, sure, Jake, but good things happen in the dark. Huh? Watch. Oh. The daylight starts to fade There's no reason to ever be afraid Take my advice Nighttime can be oh so nice When good things happen in the dark Sing a song of fireflies And thank the stars above Cause darkness brings so many things So many things to love Stinky, take a break from digging the burrow. It's time for Tizzy's quiz. Oh, and today we're going to get the answer. Or at least remember the question. <laughs> yeah. Ah, it's Tizzy's quiz. Are you ready? Yes, yes ma'am. Here it is. <laughs> the question is, why do people say that someone is mad as a March hare? What does a hare do in March that's mad? Give it a think. Oh. Uh, the question had something to do with growing hair. No, no, it was about marching or something, wasn't it? Uh, have you been busy? <laughs> Is the answer the walking wig? <laughs> Maybe you'd better hear that question again. Why do people say someone is mad as a March hare? Well, because in the spring, hares fight like mad over territory. Believe it, because it's true. Hares are very close relatives to rabbits. But hares don't live in a warren. Instead, they live in a scrape in the ground called a form. Hares have larger ears than rabbits and longer legs. And they're very fast. That's how they get away from anything that wants to catch them. In the springtime, in the month of March, male hares start to spar and box. They look as if they're going mad. But they're not going mad. They're just fighting over territory and over the females. Some fur will fly, but the hares almost never hurt each other, especially when one of them runs away. What did you say the answer to that quiz was? The, the walking wig? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, hey, it was close. Uh, sort of. Uh, and speaking of close, sort of, right over there is our good friend, Yves St. LaRoche. Oh, 
wash this floor. Wait, what, what the de- Oh, oh do not wash the floor again. Ah, uh, bonjour, bonjour. Today, I, Yves Salaroche, will show you animals how to do something only rabbits and a few other creatures can do. Eat on the hop. Hmm. But first, I will need the pogo stick. <laughs> Voila! And now we hop. <clears throat> and then we must go to the delicious chocolate cake laced with fresh cream and fresh cherries. <clears throat> there we go. Now the first thing to do is hop again. <clears throat> and now I will eat the cake. <clears throat> Oh no, no, that did not work. Let me try it again. No, 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 this is not working. Um, you know, the only thing that you can guarantee to do when you want to eat this beautiful cake is this. Oh, yummy. Well, bon appetit. And remember, you can hop until you drop, but when you eat, don't fall on your seat. Well, now it's time to meet our second guest, another animal that lives in a burrow. Oh, good, we can use all the help we can get digging. Stinky, I don't want a burrow. Oh, you're gonna love it. We'll talk. But first, here he is all the way from the heats and grasslands of the world, world. Sean the, the Rabbit. rabbit. Now, if it isn't myself, <laughs> so uh, what have we here? Oh. It looks like somebody's been digging a wee bit of a sod to make a new burrow. Welcome, Sean. Yeah, yeah, Sean, you want to help me dig a burrow for Jake? Uh -huh. For the big lad now, is it? Well, yeah. you're going to be needing a powerful bit of digging to make a home for that one. But <laughs> I don't want to live in a burrow. Oh, you love it. We rabbits wouldn't live anywhere else. Watch this. Oh. Ah, thou, now there's my own dear home on the open range. Uh, you live in that field? Well, actually, I live under that field in what we call a warren. Now, do a lot of rabbits live in your warren? Oh, there can be over a hundred rabbits in a single warren. Gee, it must get pretty crowded. Does warren mind? No, no, because, you see, we divide our area up into territories. The bigger, stronger rabbits have their own territories, and they mark their territory by spreading their scent. Uh, you mean their smell, right? Oh! Oh, you know about smells. It's my specialty. Oh, well, that lets the other rabbits know to stay away. You see, some rabbits can get mighty angry when they think someone else is crossing into their territory, and that leads to lots of chasing and fighting. Hmm. Well, what else can you tell us about living underground? He can't wait to try it himself. <laughs> oh, let me show you what it's like underground. Ah, now there's my good friend Ryan. Let's follow him down that hole. Well, how can a rabbit like Ryan find his way down there? Well, it's tough to see in the dark, but rabbits have a very good nose. We can smell our way around. Ah, hmm. now do your ears help down there, too? Well, you must keep hitting them on the top of the tunnel. Oh, no, we can fold our ears down. Uh, they're great for hearing when somebody is coming our way. I personally recommend big ears. What about hmm. rabbit babies? Oh, I recommend rabbit babies, too. Uh, no, no, no. I, I, mean, I was just wondering if your babies live underground, too. Oh, yes. We fix them with soft nests of moss and fur. Just as comfy as can be. See, the babies stay down there for about three weeks before they move above ground for the first time. You see, Jake, burrows are perfect for families. Now, when we finish with your burrow down there, you'll be able to raise a whole family of little polar bears right under our feet. <laughs> I pay good money to see that. Yeah, well, uh, first, could, could we just learn a little more about your burrow? He's a curious one now, isn't he? Well, I mean, I was just wondering, do you have more than one way in and out of your burrow? Oh, yes, there are dozens of rabbit holes all over the field. It's a great way to escape when you're being chased by another animal. Uh, is there a bad side to burrows? A bad side? Don't be silly! Ah, uh, well, now you mention it, sometimes we go a little overboard with the digging. How do you mean? Well, sometimes we dig so many tunnels crisscrossing this way and that through the field that it will collapse. Collapse? Yes, uh, sometimes the ground just gives way. You've got to be careful when you're digging burrows. Oh, uh, you mean like this burrow here? Oh, yes. I'd walk carefully around here if I were you. Yeah, well, uh, uh, thanks for the warning, uh, Sean, and thanks for coming. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Sean. Oh, my pleasure. Now, don't get me wrong. I love my burrow. In fact... You've got a song about it? How did he know that? <laughs> oh, that's Jake for you. <laughs> and now here's Sean the Rabbit singing... The Rabbit Song. Mm. 
habit of a habit of spreading out. First there were two, but now there's about two thousand trillion. All these rabbits, they need their space, so they dig big burrows all over the place by the million. But oh, it's nice to have a home to go to, even if you give your home to mum and dad, Jack and Jill, 20 babies all until you need. Another home to go to. The habit of a rabbit is to munch away. You see them eating at the break of day by the million. Some days they just won't be found, but you can bet they're underground by the trillion. But oh, it's nice to have a home to go to. Even if you give your home to Mum and Dad, Jack and Jill Twenty babies all until You need another home to go to Great song, Sean. Yeah, I really dug it. Thanks. Oh, and be careful the ground doesn't collapse. Don't you worry, Jake. With me on the job, what could possibly go wrong? I'd rather not think about it. No, I'd rather think about today's Animal Awards. And now it's time for... The Animal Awards! Today, which animal has the most babies? Oh, do tell. Is it... The giant toad? The ostrich? Mm-hmm. Or the tenrec? Hmm. Yeah. Well, they're all winners in their own category. The amphibian winner is the giant toad. The bird winner is the ostrich. And the tenric win in the mammal category with 32 babies. <laughs> Congratulations to today's winner. <laughs> Stinky, please stop digging. It's time for a story. Well, I'm sorry, Jake, but uh, digging you a burrow is even more important than hearing a story. It's a story uh, about digging. Uh, oh. Why didn't you say so? <laughs> there once was a mole who lived in a hole. Her fur was soft and black as coal. Her ears were sharp, but her eyes were poor. But who needs good eyes when a nose does much more? It was dark down there, but one thing she knew, she was getting hungry, but what could she do? There must be some food, but how could she tell? But then she smelled a wonderful smell. She'd smelled it before, and she knew what it meant. Hey, that's my dinner. I'll follow that scent. She found a delicious caterpillar. She gobbled it up, but it still didn't fill her. So, flapping her fingers and flailing her feet, the mole in the hole looked for more she could eat. This digging is tough, and you know what I think? It's making me thirsty. I could do with a drink. So, twitching her whiskers and wrinkling her nose, she sniffed out some drips from an old leaky hose. She pushed through the dirt and burrowed right through it, and there was the sun, but she never knew it. The end. Why didn't I think of that? What? Well, we get a mole in here to help, and we'll finish your burrow just like that. Hey, any moles out there? Come on in here. Help me dig. Thanks. Come here. Come here. Come here. I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> All right, listen. When Ollie comes in here yelling, it's habitat time, pretend you don't hear her. All right? Yeah, hear her. Oh, come, come. You live in the sea. That's your habitat! That's your habitat! It's habitat time! It's habitat time! Armstrong, I know you can hear me. Um, look at that lady chicken hawk over there! What? What chicken hawk? Ha! Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Armstrong, you silly bird! Yeah. Now, Today we are going to... Uh, don't tell me. A meadow. Oh, meadows are filled with beautiful flowers. Those red ones are poppies. Meadows and grasslands are a good habitat for small mammals. Mm, like that mouse. Right. Now that is a harvest mouse. <laughs> mm. Look at her climb. Wow. Oh, nice tail. <laughs> 
Oh, and there's a bird, eh? Good looking. That's a skylark. Mm. Skylarks hide their chicks away in a nest on the ground and feed them on small insects. Huh, how about that? And voles live in meadows, too, and eat nuts and seeds. Hmm. And shrews hunt for worms and insects with their long snouts. Oh, yeah, look at that snout. Huh. Whoa, that fox looks kind of jumpy there. <laughs> That's how foxes hunt for small rodents. Really? Now watch this, watch this. You see, yeah. they, they leap up and pounce, hoping to flush out a little vole or a little mouse out from the undergrowth. You mean when he jumps? Whoa, like he jumps up like that. Mm-hmm, just Holy like mackerel. that. Yeah, well, uh, you know, it doesn't look like uh, it's working too well, does it? Just give him time. Well, whoa! Seems like a lot of work to catch a little mouse. Uh, or not. Ha-ha! <laughs> See Armstrong? He got it! Yeah, life is rough out here in the meadow, I'll tell you. And there's a cuckoo looking for another bird's nest where she can lay her eggs. Oh, cuckoo! Cuckoo! Uh, cuckoo! Can't hear me. Cuckoo! What is that? The thing? No, that's a glowworm, Armstrong. Glowworms aren't really worms, but a type of beetle. And it's the female which lights up at night. And that's how she tells any passing male glowworms where she is. Oh, well, uh, in case any passing female chicken hawks want to know where I am, uh, can we go home now? <sighs> oh, okay, Armstrong. Habitat time. This is only the tapir. And I'm trying to chicken hawk. Just back from a meadow. And sending out a signal to all you lady chicken hawks. <laughs> uh. <laughs> time for another quiz. <laughs> Hi, Jake. Where's Stinky? Uh, stinky? Uh -huh. Stinky? Uh, it's time for Tizzy's quiz. Oh, well, I'm all done. Your burrow is finished. Thank you, moles. Uh, what's the quiz, Tizzy? Yeah. Hey, Share its bro with other kinds of animals? Give it a think. I'll be back in a buzz. Ready for the answer? Uh, could we have the question again? Uh, yeah, please. Here it comes. <laughs> the question, yes or no? Does a badger share its bro with other kinds of animals? And the answer is yes. A badger will share its bro with foxes, rabbits, and other animals. Thank you, Tizzy, for another quiz. And thank you, Ollie and Armstrong. Woo! And merci to you, Eve. Au revoir. And a special thanks to our guests, Humphrey the Badger and Sean the Rabbit. Yeah. Hey, uh, enjoy your burrow, Jake. Uh, <laughs> uh, to all you animals out there, until next time, keep on flapping, swimming, hopping... And living in burrows. Mm. Jake, are you ready to try your burrow? Well, yes, I... Hey... Hey, do you feel something? Well, you mean like the ground is about to... Collapse!